Hi, good uh, morning everybody. My name's Simon and uh, welcome to uh, my uh, garage on this rather lovely April uh, morning in the UK. Uh, today we're going to be having a little bit of a look at uh, servicing the uh, rear suspension components on my FJR which is uh, currently going through its 36,000 mile uh, overhaul. The job itself is not a particularly difficult one but it is something that has a habit of being neglected on the FGR, mostly due to access issues. But it is something that really should be looked at and attended to uh, with a certain amount of diligence. No copy of the uh, UK Owners Club uh, magazine is complete without dire warnings of the consequences. The big trouble is that if uh, you start to have the linkages seize up, it can cause fatigue and ultimate failure in the dog bones, causing the rear suspension to collapse. So it is something that we really should attend to. So anyway, with that bearing in mind, and no further ado, let's crack on. Right, let's just before we get started, come with me and let's have a little look at the problem. The big issue with this is going to be access. If we come down here and have a little look at the suspension components, we can immediately see there are a number of issues. What we have to look at for the overhaul are the bearings here, the main one at the bottom of the shock, the two bearings here and here, to connect the dog bones and the one that causes all the problems in terms of access at least this one the bearing that sits in the rocker arm between the two lugs that are mounted to the frame and the big problem is getting that bolt out now we can also see the center stand here center we can see that the center stand is in the way of here so we cannot even get at this with the center stand in the down position. It can be done with it in the in the up position for, for, these, for these bearings, but we're still going to have to suspend the bike at some point. In fact, but we can actually do the, this, this, and this with the bike, with the center stand still in situation. And in fact, if you don't have a way of immediately being able to suspend the bike, if you've just bought it, I would recommend that you um, have a go at doing these before you actually try and get the center stand off. So you will still need to have to suspend the bike, but you won't have to go through the rigmarole of removing this stand. To which you might say, well, what's the big problem? And the problem really comes with is the pl placement of the mounting nuts, or more specifically, their orientation. The mounting bolts are here, there's another set down here, corresponding over there, and the same with ones on the left side. The problem is that in the stock setup, the head of the bolt is on the outside. In other words, the bolt has to be pulled outwards. Now in these two rear lugs, that doesn't present any sort of a problem. The trouble is when we come round and we have a little look at the one that is here. We, you can barely see it. I'll try and get the camera around. Yeah, we can just about see the head. There we go. Now that is the sticking point. The trouble is you cannot extract that bolt as it is installed in the factory without removing the exhaust or at least very severely bending the exhaust. I know some people have done that, but to be honest, I'm not, I personally am never very happy with that because of the twisting loads you're going to put on the exhaust mounts, the gaskets, you're just asking for trouble. So, but the only, the only other alternative is, the, main, the alternative as suggested in the manual is we remove the exhaust. But the problem with that is if we have to remove the exhaust, we have to remove the fairing. We have to then remove the radiators, dismount and uh, drain the coolant, dismount the exhaust, 
then we can get at this. Now all of this of course takes a considerable amount of time and this is the real problem why um, why, my, why uh, the dealers are not very keen on it. This takes a lot of time and it also is, which is expensive and if you're working on say a fixed price for uh, an overhaul for a, for a particular service then they're going to lose money so they're not very keen on doing it but you'll be pleased to know there is a way out of this situation but what it involves is, is actually cutting the head off the nuts anyway we'll have a little look at that in a bit Anyway, we're all getting a, a little bit of ahead of ourselves. So, what have we decided? We know that we're going to have to suspend this bike in order to get those suspension components. So let's have a little look at what we're going to have to do and look at some of the methods we could do it. Okay. Right. As we can see, it's a fairly hefty bike. We need something with a good amount of strength both to lift it and also as an attachment point. Now here, as you can see, I have a block and tackle set, which I made up specifically for it. Um, the block and tackle is cheap, it was, it's only a little one ton rated one, and the beam has been, uh, is double strength, and while I was making all this up, I made up a second suspension point so I could keep the bike suspended but also keep it out of the way if I needed main access. Was it no kill like overkill? The next thing we're going to have to look at is where are we going to suspend the bike from? Now what we, what looks the obvious place, namely the grab rails, probably isn't the best because these are only plastic and remember this bike weighs the best bit of 300 kilos. That's 650 pounds more or less okay we're not going to take anywhere near that kind of weight through it but it wouldn't be a good idea to try to uh, to break th these things or or perhaps damage the mountings equally so so what we're going to do is we're going to have a little look at mounting the thing to the, directly to the subframe and to do that of course we're going to have to uh, get the seats off and the side panels off so let's start right We've just started going, so let's have a look at getting this uh, seat and everything off first. All right, first things first, we just need to take the rear and take the seat off, just undo the latch, the back end comes off. We'll put this somewhere nice and safe. Likewise, we've got to get this off now. This one's a little interesting. If you've never done this before, it will fox you. There's a little catch that lives down there. You have to get your thumb in and out it comes. This thing has a rather nasty protuberance here, so don't put it on anything that, that could be damaged. Next thing, removal of the side panels. Uh, easy way to do this first is remove this. This takes a couple little allen screws and we've got two little uh, push push fasteners there with little um, cross heads to uh, release them. The first thing we'll do is we'll just take the cap screws out And then we'll look at removing the Phillips screws there. Literally, it's just half a turn and they unlatch. Whoops. And be careful not to lose them. Fact. To keep these safe, you can sometimes just put, for these these little ones, just pull them back into their mounting points. But it does help if you actually take take the uh, take the thing off first. So that's out. Now this will just pull out and back. It takes a little bit of force, particularly if the rubber hasn't. Use for a while. 
So it's out at the front and then back. There we go. You can see here, you've got these grommets going to there, and that tab goes into there. Again, we can put them nice and safe. And just to remind ourselves where these things came from, we can just put those into the back of the tank. Less you have lying around on the bench, the better. These will just go over here. The next thing, of course, is to remove the side panels. And again, we've got a nice little mixture of cap screws and these plastic fasteners. And there's, some, there's quite often little hidden ones somewhere particularly on the far side with the grab rail, but it's always a good idea to check. We'll just take that half out. There we go. And there's one down there. It can come out, like so. And this one here. Now, now in the manuals they'll say you can just slide this out, but I really don't think that's a very good idea. It's much better if you release this particular screw here. I know we're not going to take this panel off, but if you release it you don't put any strain on it. That crack, by the way, was like it when I got the bike, but you've got to remember these panels are not going to be as flexible as they once were. This bike is now a 2010, so one of the last of this Gen 2 variant, and she's already 10 years old. So a little care and attention with this. This, by the way, here's your ABS system. And we do the same on the other side. This round here, you have another cap screw. It's easy to miss this one. There we go. And the usual collection of plastic fasteners. These just take literally half a turn, half a turn, and they come loose. And anyone, I guess one more. There we go. Always a good idea just to always check. There we go. Now there's one faster. Good. We're not going to pull that out hard. We're going to do exactly as I said before loosen this off. Does it even have to come all the way out? Take that out. Now this is free. And it'll come out easily. Oh, not so good. Be careful with these. As I say, that I think was probably due to it being over tightened before. But the manual does say you can pull them straight out. Not really such a good idea given these panels age now. Right, we'll tidy this up and just put this onto the bench. Right guys, now we've got the side panels off, we can have a little look at the subframe. Now the thing is, this is a fairly good solid piece of metal here, but you've got to remember that when we're doing this, we are using a piece of the bike in a way the designers did not envisage it being used. So we must uh, proceed with caution. Now, we basically want to lift the bike at a point as far back as is generally feasible. The reason being is when we do that, we have a longer leverage. We're going to pivot it. The nose, the the front wheel is going to stay on the ground, and we're going to pivot it up. So as far, the further back we go, the easier the lift. However, structural reasons, structural problems come in. If you did round here, you you're putting a lot of load into these members here. So if we have a look at the geometry of this thing, you can see we have a very strong triangle 
here. A lot of welding, a lot of gusseting. So this is really going to be our attachment point. Triangle, of course, being the strongest geometric shape. The stresses we're going to put are in are going to be tension along the bottom and compression along here. It is tempting to use the middle of these, but the problem with that is we are now bending the member here. And that's not really a good idea. I'm sure it would be strong enough if you tried it. You probably wouldn't damage it, but let's not go there. So what we're going to do is we're going to attach these lifting straps, one each side. I've got a spreader bar that the straps will be attached to, and then that will go onto the hook. This is probably a bit over-engineered, but the idea of the spreader bar is to avoid putting any twisting or torsional loads into the subframe. It was never designed to take that. And although it looks fairly hefty, again, why take chances? You probably could get away with a single strap run between there and over here on the far side, we have a really nice mounting point. This is the grab handle for putting it up on the center stand. This is strong enough. This will take quite a bit of load. So we're not too worried about that. Okay, so let's get it all fitted up and uh, see how we go. Right, we've uh, now got the uh, straps all fitted up, as we can see. Uh, this has been looped round and through the gap there to secure it so it won't go back. Over on this side, we have this into the grab rail here. This is good, good, nice solid piece of metal there. We've attached the uh, spreader bar here. And of course, because we have chains moving around, I put uh, some towels and that all over the paintwork just to stop anything being scratched. So the next exciting thing, of course, is we're going to have to lift it off the ground. Now, if you were considering changing a tire out at the back, now would be a good time to take the rear wheel off. We're not going to do this simply because I want to show that it can be done without doing it. And anyway, I'm a strict believer in never taking anything further apart than you actually really have to. So we will proceed. But to do this, we have to be very, very careful about what we're doing. So without further ado, let's crack on. Right. So here we go then. We've got everything secured. We're double checked. We've uh, got the side stand down. The reason for that is it's important because as we lift the bike, the bike is going to want to roll. Now this, the FJR being a shaft driven bike with a shaft on the left has a tendency to roll slightly to the left. Now that's good because we need some way of securing it from toppling. So that's good. We've also aligned the bike slightly so it's to the right of the center line so the bike will again naturally want to go to the left. We only need just over a few degrees just to secure it. If you were really feeling enthusiastic, you could have additional mounting points up on the ceiling and run luggage straps down to the handlebars, but we can get away without that. So anyway, let's go. As I say, this, this little bit of the operation, I always find somewhat nerve wracking. Now we can see the bikes just wanting to keel over. Right. There we go. As you can see, the bike's suspended at the moment. Just a little bit, and she's just sort of on a natural balance point. But we really could do with a little bit more of a lean to make this thing a bit more secure. So we'll just bring her up an inch or two. Right. That's not bad, maybe a little more, just for safety. Okay, so we've got the bike quite comfortable. She's just sitting there. She naturally wants to keel over right to, onto her left side. But the bike can still actually rock fore and aft. So to stop that, what we can do is use the front brake. 
And in this case, I'm simply going to use a zip tie just to apply a little bit of pressure. It doesn't have to be much, just stop it rocking fore and aft. Now, as we can see, the bike is relatively stable now. So the next thing we have to do is look at start to undoing the bolts and disconnecting the suspension linkages. We can also see that with the stand in the retracted position, you can actually now get at these, this bolt in particular and slide it out that way. So this, if we did not want to remove the center stand, we could do, as I say, these bearings, that one, and those two, and this main one. And these, these ones are the ones that tend to suffer the most. But we're going to do the whole lot today. So now we are happy that things are secure. It's time to start the work properly. Right, first thing we're going to do is take off this nut here, and then we're going to drift out this bolt to free the dog bones off from the swing arm. Now, of course, because we've got the rear wheel still in here, there's quite a bit of weight and therefore tension on that bolt. So what we can do is we can put a little bit of timber under here and just shim it a bit, just to take a little bit of weight out of here and ease this bolt as we uh, take it out. It doesn't have to be doing very much, just a little bit. And I've used just an old, a couple of old balks of timber and some offcuts I have lying around the, the workshop. So that being the case, let's crack on with this. Right, the bolts here, 17 millimeter for the bolt head. For the nut, it's 14 millimeters. And there we go, it's starting to come off. Now these things have a self-keeping function in the nut. They're a bit like nylocks. Oops. There we go. So we just, and we've obviously got that tension just right because that was a straight pull. Not bad, not a bad job at all. Let's put that over there. You can now see the dog bones drop away. Now the bearing in question lives in this housing and this is the central spline to it. Right. Just so we can see things a little better, I'll go get a tool. All right, hopefully you can see this. The way to grease this is we push this out a little bit and you can see in there, I don't know whether you can just see the bearings. Now, one very important thing that I have to mention is these bearings are loose. In other words, if you push that thing, that central um, pivot point all the way out, uh, without there being sufficient grease to hold there, those needles are going to drop out. And that is just not what we need to happen. The first time I did this, uh, the bike had obviously not been greased for a long while and there was like a brown wax over everything. In fact, it was so thick and resilient, I almost thought that they'd replaced the bearings with phosphor bronze, but it was just waxed up. Anyway, they look rather nice. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pack them with grease while we're thinking about it. So I shall just go and get our grease can. Right, the grease we're using today is Silkeline R Pro RG2. This is uh, a grease recommended by the uh, FJR Owners Club. Um, it's basically the same as any other lithium grease. It's just a little bit thicker and it um, resists being dispersed by water a lot more apparently. Anyway, this is what uh, the club recommend, so we're using it. But uh, Yamaha recommend any um, good lithium grease. The only thing that they don't like is using the molybdenum grease. I don't know why, but that's what's recommended. So today we're going to use this and uh, let's crack on. Okay, so as we said, we have to be careful that we're not going to drop the bearing, the individual needle rollers out. So we'll push that out so in so far so we can see what we're doing. Just get a nice glob of grease. This is one of these, uh, one of these jobs where the bigger the 
bigger the gob, the better the job. And once we're, we've got those bearings nicely in place, we can afford to push that in a little bit more. Just pack it in. Oh yeah. That's the good stuff. Okay, I think that will basically do that side. And while we're at it, we can also examine the, the seal, make sure that's in good condition. Obviously, if it is not, we would replace it. And we push it back, that smears it around a bit. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Right, again, checking the seal, make sure that's fine. Push that through. We can see the bearings are greased, that's nice. I'll push that in. Nice big blob of grease in there. You can never go too far wrong with that. Let's push that back the other way. Right, good stuff, eh? And I think that We'll probably do. As I said, this job is not not hard once you've got yourself sorted out. It's just getting at everything. So, swing arm bearings are now sorted. Jobs are good. Right, next, next job, we'll disconnect the dog bones. And that gives us a free run with the swing arm and stops these things flopping around. We're not going to grease the bearings for this in situ we're going to take it up on the bench and do it a lot more comfortably but if we were as i say if we were trying to do this uh just as a sort of quickie job the same rule about the bearings the needles be in the rollers being free same applies don't push the thing through too far in case all the needles drop out so in enough to hold grease in do the same thing on the other side and then you can push the bearing shaft through to expose all the bearings but until you're sure that they're going to stay in place be very very careful right same deal over here 14 millimeter on that side 17 millimeter on that and again these are these ones with the anti anti-vibration fasteners We have a washer off and oh one one dog bone off and you see how easy that was there for that to move so but we'll keep that in all nicely closed up good stuff so we can take these out of the way and put them safely to one side gather up our fasteners and make over there and uh, tidy up and get ready for the next job, which of course is going to be removing the center stand. Yippee. Right, we can't put off the, uh, the evil moment any longer. This is when we have to talk about removing center stand bolts. And this is the source of most of our problems. This is a standard FJR center stand bolt. It's 14 millimeters front and back and the big problem with these are their position they will have been subject to an awful lot of corrosion and certainly if you live in somewhere like the UK subject to salt which will make things twice as bad so if you have any doubts about how they're going to come off I would thoroughly recommend absolutely soaking these things in penetrating oil any brand will do but just give them a good soak for 24 hours to give you the best chance. The other thing I would recommend, if you can possibly get hold of any, is a set of wall drive sockets and, or, and spanners. What these are is they look very much like impact sockets. You can see, they, I don't know if you can see that, that's gently cambered in. So, this, so the faces are like that. And the idea is that the driving force, instead of being onto the edge of the nut, or bolt, as you do with a standard 16 point socket, is actually into the walls. And you can just see that. 
don't know whether you can see that, just where the contact points are. And the idea is you get absolute maximum drive out of them and you stand less chance of stripping the bolt. Same way that the uh, ring spanners work. That's, and you can see there, that's not quite so obvious there. But again, it's the same principle. I've, I bought this particular set of uh, spanners is actually a laser set. Um, they were about 50 quid a few years, about mm, five years ago. And I have to say it has got me out of so many problems, particularly if you work on rusty cars and having, uh, having to do their brakes, which invariably are corroded to bits. This, has got, the, this type of equipment has got me out of so many binds. The other thing we have to consider is uh, how we're going to cut these bolts off. Now, this thing is going to be pointing out, so the head of the bolt is on the outside. And we're going to have to get a blade in behind it to cut it. And if we just go down here, we can have a little look. So, our bolt is down here. And what we need to do is be able to get the saw in behind and to work at it. Now, the one problem we're going to have is that the bolt may be spinning. So we need some way to hold it. So a good trick is to simply put a uh, set of vice grips onto the thread like that so we can cut it. And, and you've got something, even just the weight of the vice grips themselves will stabilize this. We don't really care about what happens to the thread on this bolt because we're not going to be using it anymore. Now, as I said, quarters are tight on these bikes. So, I personally found the easiest way was simply to use a standard hacksaw blade in a, in a mounting handle. Uh, for the life of me, I cannot find the thing at the moment, but you can make one up very easily, just wrapping the bottom of the blade in tape, maybe put a little bit of sliver of wood there, just to give you a handle. Um, uh, if you get a, uh, an air saw in there, a little air saw with a metal cutting blade, that will work well. Uh, reciprocating saws, I think, would generally probably be a little bit too big, but again, if you have the room, fabulous. But do remember, of course, that we're working very close in close proximity to the uh, aluminium frame, which we don't want to nick, if for no other reason than if you break the finish, it can start to cause corrosion. Right, with that being said, let's, uh, let's get going and uh, have a go at getting this uh, stand off. Right, let's start here. Now, as I said, I've made, I've made up my own stainless steel bolts for uh, this job, as you can see with a set of nylocks. They use uh, 17 millimeters. Uh, size. I went for the larger nuts simply because the bigger the better really. Gives you a lot more purchasing power on them. And uh, you never know, even though they're stainless steel, seizing is not out of question. I live in, we're, we live in Britain here, so we deal with road salt, so anything is possible. Uh, another useful thing to have for working around bikes in general is a set of these little extension drives with the little wobble points. This means that if you can't quite get a, a square run at it, you've actually got a little bit of uh, adjustability available, and it's nowhere near as floppy as using a UJ, and, or, as or as taking as much space, which around bikes is very, very useful. Now, because this thing is also probably going to be a little bit stiff, uh, instead of my normal 3 8 I'm going to go to a half-inch drive, and we have a a 3 8 to half inch adjust adapter there. Put that on the back. And we'll give it a, a good snap. And that came off very nicely. Oh yeah. We like that. So we've got that off. Can now spin that off. And number one bolt should be coming out. Good. And in typical fashion, of course, it's dropped. Good. That should come out. And the stainless steel washer will come out as well. As you can see, these are substantially bigger. Put a fairly thick washer on the back. 
because this it means if you do get trying to get a socket or something, the bolt sits deep into the socket or into the wrench. Gives you maximum grip on the thing. So, if you are going to make up your own bolts and that, make sure you have enough shank, unthreaded shank available. You might well, you know, in order to get enough shank, you might well have to buy a bolt considerably longer than what you actually want. So you'll need to cut it down. That's no big problem. In with stainless steel, sand hacksaw will do the job. But what you want to do then is find the uh, the edges over on a grinder, and if you and uh, with a suitable tap uh, die, if you have a tap and die set at the appropriate thread, simply clean the threads. Um, later on this video, if I'm bored, I might actually make one up just for a demonstration, but very straightforward. But as I say, by far the easiest thing to do is simply buy another one from Yamaha. So let's pop this to one side for safekeeping. And that only gives me another four to do, yay. And then we'll look at the fun aspect of getting the, the actual rocker itself out. So it's not doing itself, so let's crack on there. Right, right, finally got this thing off, no, no great problems. And as you can see, I put all the bolts that I made up mounted as they would be in the bike. Heads, the heads need to be on the inside so the bolts can be extracted inwards. Makes life so much easier. And as you can see, I've got nylocks on all of them bar the right front because that's running in very close proximity to the exhaust pipe and I have to admit, I uh, didn't think the nylock would actually survive too well, so we just have a standard stainless steel bolt. Uh, one thing I didn't tell you about was these little cap screws that go in the front of the stand, and they mount onto captive nuts on the back of the exhaust pipe. No big deal there. One thing you might have a bit of a problem with, and something I quite forgot about, was this little wire guide. Um, I've sort of bent it out of the way because it restricts access to the back to this bolt. Um, I can't get, all it does is uh, hold a single down pipe overflow pipe um, and to be fair that could be uh, zip tied quite easily so I can't help get the feeling that before this goes back on it's going to have a little appointment with the uh, Mr. Angle Grinder. Anyway we've uh, we're now about halfway through this job and the next thing is to extract the rocker arm. But before we do that, I think I'm gonna go have a quick cup of tea. So I'll catch you in a moment. See you then. Right, back from tea break. And so on we go. Next job, as we said, take that rocker out. First thing we're gonna do is disconnect the shock. And we'll find that it's a 19 millimeter on this side, 14 on the other. So we'll have to go around the other side and Attack it from there. Right, let's have a look. See how hard or otherwise this is going to be. Ah, that wasn't too bad at all. Right, it's spinning now. Get that off again, these things have got the keepers on them. I hope you can see that all right. Once again, rescue the washer. And we'll just put that back there. Okay, that's pretty good. And that will just drop out in a moment with a little persuasion. Right, we've just uh, dropped that out. See the bearing there, that's nice. But again, we're just going to leave the center part in there and uh, do the work on the bench. Final bolt is this one. And it's uh, 14 millimeters on each side. 
So we're going to be able to get a ring span on here. And it's fairly tight quarters on the other side. Uh, so I'm having to use 3 8 socket um, with my finest little 3 8 drive. And there's just enough room to get that in. We'll have to go round on the other side to get it off. So let's put uh, that on there and pop round again. And uh, a little go in it. Oh, this is probably going to take a little bit of effort, I would imagine. Oh, yep, that's a way. Ah, putting grease in, on everything really has helped. So this will come off and then I'll have to gently work the bolt through. Good stuff. Ooh, let's just get the spanner off. Now, have we gone out far enough to clear? We'll just have to check it. This is held in by a little bit of a spring retention clip, uh, so it'll just stand there. But anyway, let's just get ourselves uh, tidied up and then we'll tackle this problem from the other side where we can actually see what's going on. Right, what's holding this up is this bolt is just hitting the pipe there and it's just catching the edge of the rocker arm. I don't know whether it's just an oddity with this particular bike or whether maybe at some point it's taken a bit of a sideways knock that's altered this. I suspect it's actually more just a manufacturing tolerance, but whatever. We just need to pull this out a little bit enough to retract the bolt and drop this out. Now, this is held in, as I say, with a little bit of a clip um, that pushes on the sides anyway, so it's going to need a bit of a pull. So let's uh, crack on. We've got a nice big spanner to provide us with a bit of leverage. And put it under here. Give this thing a good pull. Down. There we go. Not too much trouble. Ah, oh dear. They didn't put that in the manual. But uh, I've just hooked that up there. We can just see what the real problem is. If we do this, just release the bolt. There we go. Cool. Now, if we just pop round the other side, we'll get a torch first. Right, right, guys, guys, guys. This, this is, as you can see, is the problem. Hopefully, you can see just that bolt there. That's where it's hitting the exhaust. And you see, it's just protruding very slightly into the lugs, uh, extending from the lugs, and that's just what's hanging up the rocker arm. Uh, it's not by very much, so you only need a very slight tweak just to pull that clear uh, to, and uh, drop it out. As I say, it's just something to bear in mind if you're having a problem extracting the, uh, the rocker arm um, before you start reaching to hammers, for hammers. We can also see here there's just that little protuberance there, just sticking clear of the casting. That actually just acts almost uh, like a spring, just hell, holds the... Uh, the rocker arm in place anyway, so you will need a little bit of a pull anyway. Right, so we've done that. Let's uh, crack on and re-grease the rocker arm and then start to think about putting it all back together. Right, right. So we've just got this over here on the bench, giving it a quick clean up. And uh, the orientation of this thing is, this is the rear, which gives the shock. This is the mount for the, um, to, the swear, to the to the frame. And of course you've got your mounts here onto the uh, dog bone linkages. So let's start with the front then. Now the first thing is make sure it's all nice and clean. Make sure that we're not going to introduce dirt into the bearing. So we can just push this through a bit. If we get a torch, we can just inspect the state of the bearings. And you can see that's all looking rather nice in there. No sign of rust, corrosion, seals all look good. So we'll just uh, pop some grease on there. Again, being careful, just put this halfway through so there's no danger of the 
needle rollers running out. And we can do the same from the other side. Again, we can see that's all looking quite nice in there. Good, so that's the front bearing done. Now for the centers. Again, quick inspection. Yeah, that all looks good. Plenty of grease in there already. That's actually quite gratifying to know because I haven't done a lot of miles on this bike since this job was last done. But I have done quite a bit of riding in some fairly heavy rain. And a few hours of motorway operations in the in a deluge, I would have thought might have degraded the washed the grease right out of the bearings. But rather gratifying to know that it didn't happen. Again. Same deal on this, just check the bearing. It's all looking good. Nice big lump of grease in there. Oh yeah, good stuff. And that's all the way through. Cool. And last but not least, the shock bearing. Again, same deal, looks really nice in there. Well, we'll just pop some grease in. Nice big gob there. And run it through. Same on this side. Cool. And just uh, wipe off the excess. Right, and that's looking nice. So that's almost ready to go back into the bike. So it's now just a matter of uh, reassembly. But I think first, before we do anything else, we might go and have, have a little lunch, have something to eat. Enough. And then we will continue with this. Okay, well, I'll see you in a moment and uh, we'll continue and put this whole thing back together. Right, suitably refreshed, let's go and start and put this thing back into, into place. It's, the whole reassembly is simply a reverse of what we've done. So we'll take this and we'll mount it into the forward mounting points on the frame. Now we know it's going to be a little stiff getting in there because, as I say, there's this little pressure washer that acts like a spring, just keeps everything in place. It stops the thing rattling around. So we've still got our bolt in its position and we might need a little bit of help, a little bit of action with the rubber mallet, just to sort of ease it into position. Always takes just a little bit, a little bit of persuasion. So we'll just get a little mallet and we'll just tap that the last little bit of a way in. Right, a little bit of tapping and we've now drifted that back into position. That's good. Okay, so all we've got to do is put the nut on the far side. And that is at least secure. We're not going to bother talking anything down at this moment. We're just locating everything in place. We've got that, got that, that just, just tightened up, just loosely. Next thing is to put this in here. And you can see that that swings up. Nut comes in from this side, the shoulder goes over. And then we can just place that on the far side just to keep it. There we go. And again, we'll just let that sit there because it isn't going anywhere. Might actually do that up 
a little bit uh, a bit tighter than that. Right, next thing is we'll put in the dog leg and the dog bones. And then we can just slide that in there. We have the knot on this side. Second dog bone goes over like so. Sits onto the bolt. That's there. And whoop. Just fasten the nut in. On this side. 17 millimeter wrench on here, 14 on here. Does help you actually have. This. And we'll just do that up. Just sufficient to keep everything in place. Okay, that's good. We've got a little bit of adjustment. We can take the bolt out of here, along with the washer, and slide these up. There we go, and we can see we've got good alignment. Well, might have to do a little bit of jiggling to get this in. Always. Ah, there we go. And there we are, through. Right. There we are, into position. Washer. And then the nut goes on there. So that's all our suspension components. Popped it. And we can just uh, nip that up. Next thing we're going to have to do is think about talking, saving the torques on this. It's easier to do this while we haven't got the center stand in the way. Right, quick check of the manual just to check our torque settings. Okay, the front bolt, we can see, that's the one going to the frame, is at 40 newton meters, 29 pound foot. So we've got 40 newton meters set. We can see that the uh, nuts for the Dog bones are at 29 pound foot, 40 newton meters, and the one for the rear, for the shock, that's going in again at, my apologies, the shock is at 29 pound foot, 40 newton meters, and the um, dog bones are, re, are all going in slightly higher at 35 pound foot, 48 newton meters. So let's do all the 40 newton meter stuff first. So the shock, and we also said the front, the front rocker uh, bolt. Right, hope you can see this. We've got this on the front bolt, and we'll just give it a quick crank. There we go. Nice click. That's that done. Now the other 40 newton meter one we said was the uh, shock. Uh, and as always happens, the spanny want is just out of reach. Right, just rescued my 19 millimeter. There you go, 40 newton meters. Right, just have to remind myself what the settings for the dog bones are and we've got them all talked up. Right, we've just checked the setting, it's 48 newton meters, that's about 35 pound foot. So we'll just do these. That's it. Nice click. Let's get the spanner on the far side, there we go. There you go, click, click. And that's it, that's the main suspension all talked up. Right, next thing will be the center stand to be refitted. Right, finally, we're gonna put the center stand back on. This video is already getting very long, so I'm not gonna film it in detail. Suffice it to say, it's just a reverse of uh, removing it, but of course we have our bolts with the heads on the inside, nuts on the outside. One, a couple of useful tips. Uh, one is to, to uh, do this bolt, which is the front right, which is in very tight quarters with this exhaust pipe here. 
it's useful to hold the thing in a uh, set of vice grips like so this just holds it steady allows you to hold it in position and feed the nut in from the other side just to get it threaded up and then you can put a normal spanner on it uh, this little wire holder I decided in the end not to uh, take it off I think it's fine if it's bent over like that we can get this nice little craftsman uh, offset rare offset uh, socket wrench in here and you can see we've now got enough clearance and also sufficient clearance of the mounting point for the uh, for the frame rocker mounts because that's the that's the problem with using sockets it gets very tight it's doable but it's a bit awkward and what can happen is the bolt can back into the socket and it's then nearly impossible to get the socket wrench out without uh, somehow screwing the thing forward. A re a, uh, an open-ended wrench is much better if you can get it. A nice little socket wrench which will allow you to pull it off. Anyway, we'll get this on and then we'll look at uh, lowering the bike down and wrap this up. Did everything secure? Everything went in quite nicely with a bit of jiggery pokery as it always does with these things. Uh, so now really there's nothing more but to get it down off its stand, off the uh, hoist. So first thing we've got to do is just get the tops out from the rear wheel. Obviously we can start to gently lower the old girl down. And as we do it we can see she's starting to come up. We can pull the wooden block out. Gently let it settle down onto a stand. The eagle has landed. Touchdown. Okay, so let's get that all clear. Slacken everything else off. Hook that up out of the way. And of course, all we've got to do now is disconnect everything. Just take any tension off that front wheel. We'll, uh, and here we go. There you go. So she, we've now released any tension that we've got there. Looking good, looking good. Everything is as it should be. We're pretty happy. Right, the rest of this thing really is just Disconnect the, the, uh, the shackles, put the side panels on, put the seat back on, and we are good to go. Ah, dear. And it all is just a complete reverse of what we did taking everything off. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this that just about wraps it up for the evening. It's been a fairly long day. I'd say this all looks a rather formidable job, but in fact, it's not. It's just a load of smaller jobs all put together. The big secret with this is to have a secure and safe way to suspend the bike. Once you achieve that, you're basically home and dry. The rest is very, very straightforward and certainly well within the capability of even a moderately competent home mechanic. Anyway, it's been a long day and thank you very much for uh, staying with me. I'm going to enjoy a beer now. Cheers.